Hello and welcome. My name is Richard Randolph, and I'm honored and privileged to serve as the senior pastor at Christ United Methodist Church here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Our church seeks to be an open, welcoming, and affirming community of faith. We believe that God created each of us in God's own divine image, and that God loves and accepts us just as we are. We welcome everyone, regardless of those things that differentiate us, such as economic status, or ethnicity, or sexual orientation, or political perspective, because we believe that God intends for us to live together in a, and worship together in a community of faith that loves and cares and supports for one another. Hello, my name is Kim Garrison. I'm program director here at Christ United. If you would like to support our church or our missions, you can do so by writing a check and sending it to the address that you see on your screen, or you can certainly go to our website and go to the push pay button. March 31st is the last day to purchase tickets for an opportunity to receive the 50 plus gifts shown in the photo from the UMW fundraiser. These items have been donated by the UMW women and the basket containing all of these items will be given away April 2nd to a very lucky ticket holder. For more information or to purchase tickets for this fundraiser, please call any of the ladies that you see on your screen. Proceeds will be used for local and global missions. And now check out this announcement about our Holy Week and Easter services. On Sunday, March 28th at 11 a.m. on Facebook, we will host our Palm Sunday service. On Friday, April 2nd at 6 p.m. on Facebook, we'll host our Good Friday service with Pastor Beth Graberholt. On Sunday, April 4th at 7 a.m., we'll host an Easter sunrise service in the Christ UMC Orchard with Pastor Beth Graberholt. For this service, you can either bring a lawn chair, use one of our provided folding chairs, or listen to the service over the radio from the comfort of your car. On Sunday, April 4th, we'll also have an 11 a.m. service on Facebook with Pastor Richard Randolph. Thank you, and we hope you'll join us. Lent is a 40-day period of spiritual preparation before Easter and our celebration of Christ's resurrection. A central part of this spiritual preparation is seeking forgiveness for our sins and our shortcomings. Will you join with us in this time of confession as we offer a prayer? Please hear these words. O oh God of mercy, we humbly concede that sometimes we do not take the time to listen and try to understand others who are different from us or those who disagree with us. Rather than seeking to understand the world from their perspective, we remain entrenched in our own perspectives. Rather than listening to these others, we are busy thinking of what we will say back to them after they have finished speaking. Sometimes we would rather win an argument than to truly understand a different perspective. Forgive us, O oh merciful God. Help us to listen and learn. Help us to remember that others have different life experiences than us. Help us to appreciate and learn from these different perspectives. And now will you join with us in a time of silence as we lift up our own individual sins and shortcomings.
Rejoice and be glad. Because of God's love, we are forgiven and reconciled. Thanks be to God. Amen. Scripture today is from the book of Joshua, chapter 22, verses 1 through 6 and 10 through 12. Then Joshua summoned the Reubenites and Gadites and the half tribe of Manasseh and said to them, You have done all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded, and you have obeyed me in everything I commanded. For a long time now, this very day, you have not deserted your fellow Israelites, but have carried out the mission the Lord your God gave you. Now that the Lord your God has given them rest as he promised, return to your homes in the land that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you on the other side of Jordan. But be very careful to keep the commandment and the law that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, to keep his commandments, to hold fast to him, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Then Joshua blessed them and sent them away, and they went to their homes. When they came to the region near the Jordan that lies in the land of Canaan, the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh built the there an altar by the Jordan, an altar of great size. The Israelites heard that the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh had built an altar at the frontier of the land of Canaan and the region near the Jordan on the side that belongs to the Israelites. And when the people of Israel heard of it, the whole assembly of the Israelites gathered at Shiloh to make war against them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our scripture today is about a misunderstanding that potentially could have led to a very violent conflict, a war. For the first time in over 45 years of migration and fighting, the people of Israel can finally settle down in the promised land 
and look forward to a time of peaceful existence. God has delivered the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. God has been with the Israelites as they wandered in the desert for 40 years. God has been with the Israelites, helping them to prevail in battles that they had with other people. God has delivered on his promise to give the Israelites a special land to settle down in, a promised land flowing with milk and honey. Now the Israelites have finally arrived at the promised land. All that remains for them to do is to settle down. Now, politically, the Israelites were divided into 12 groupings, which they called tribes. So there are the 12 tribes of Israel. The promised land was divided into 12 political regions corresponding to these 12 tribes. Most of the 12 tribes settled on the land which was on the west side of the River Jordan. However, two tribes, the Reubenites and the Cadites, settled on land located on the east side of the River Jordan. And in addition, the land which belonged to the tribe of Manasseh straddled the River Jordan so that some of the tribe of Manasseh was on the eastern side of the river along with the Reubenites and the Cadites. In our scripture this morning, Joshua, who is the leader of the nation, gives the Reubenites and the Cadites and the people of Manasseh final instructions and a blessing just before they cross over the River Jordan to their new homes on the eastern side of the river. These people headed to the east also promised to remain faithful to God and their covenant with the other ten tribes of Israel. However, just before crossing the River Jordan, these eastern tribes stopped and built an altar, an altar that was intended to be a memorial. Then they crossed over the river and began settling into their new homes. When Joshua and the ten tribes on the west side of the river heard about the altar which the tribes on the east had constructed, they were outraged. They were ready to fight. For the western Israelites, the construction of this new altar could only mean one thing, the height of treasury. Before, because it violates one of the fundamental principles of their covenant together. That covenant principle was that there was to be only one central place to worship the Lord, and that place was in the West. When the Eastern tribes built the second altar, the Western tribes interpreted this as a sign that the Eastern tribes were going to worship foreign deities, to make sacrifices on that altar to foreign de deities, and thus betray their loyalty to the God of Israel, who delivered them from slavery to Egypt, been with them in their 40 years of wandering in the desert, and finally give, given them the promised land. This would be the greatest apostasy that they could ever do. The Western tribes felt hurt and betrayed, and so they were outraged. Immediately, immediately they began to prepare for war against the Eastern tribes. So, after they had all of their battle gear on, just as they were ready to cross over the River Jordan and attack their fellow Israelites, someone said, uh... Maybe we should go and talk to them first before we attack them and kill them. So, they designated Phineas, a priest, along with one representative from each of the western ten tribes of Israel. Phineas and his delegation cross over the River Jordan and go before an assembled congregation 
of the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the people from the tribe of Manasseh. Phineas speaks on behalf of Joshua and the Western tribes. Here's what he said. Thus says the whole congregation of the Lord, what is this treachery that you have committed against the God of Israel in turning away today from following the Lord by building for yourselves an altar today in rebellion against the Lord. When Phineas had finished speaking, the Eastern tribes are shocked and they're astounded. And then they, they explain, they say, you and the Western tribes of Israel have completely misunderstood us. We did not build another altar to be in rebellion against the Lord. No. Instead, we built a memorial altar because we were afraid that over time you would forget all about us. We don't want you to ever forget us over here on the eastern side. We don't want to rebel against you or God. Quite the opposite. We want you to remember that we in the east are still part of the people of Israel. We still worship the God who has delivered us and been with us and provided for us. Well, to make a long story short, when Phineas and his delegation hear the explanation from the Eastern tribes, they basically shrug their shoulders and say, oh, our bad, we're sorry, we'll go now. So they cross back across the, over the River Jordan, and then they tell the Western tribes that the they can stand down. There's not going to be a war. There's no cause for a war because the Eastern tribes are not rebelling, not being treacherous. On the contrary, they are loyal and hope that they are never forgotten. Everybody can go back home and live in peace. Now, isn't this story from the Bible typical of much conflict that we see today? conflict arising out of a misunderstanding. The Western tribes did not know the Eastern tribes all that well, even though they belonged to the same people. So when they saw the memorial altar, they stereotyped the Eastern tribes. They assumed the worst and jumped to the conclusion, conclusions which were rooted in suspicion. It seems to me that, that we do that even today. We stereotype groups of people without getting to know them first. And then we assume the worst about these people instead of the best. We jump to conclusions and before we know it, a conflict has emerged. It is so easy for conflict to emerge from misunderstanding, so easy for conflict to emerge from misunderstanding. Sometimes conflicts emerge not with a group of people, but with an idea or a suggestion or maybe an institution. I believe that we can see this kind of conflict with science in our country today. Public opinion polls tell us that one third of Americans have decided not to get the COVID vaccine because they don't trust the scientists or the doctors behind the vaccines. There are all these rumors and conspiracy theories around the vaccines. I was in my doctor's office several weeks ago and he told me of a conversation he had had with someone convinced that the COVID vaccine was going to permanently alter their DNA. 
he had been unsuccessful in convincing this person that there was no way the vaccine would have any impact upon the DNA which they had inherited from their biological parents. As Christians, we believe that God intends for us to be good stewards of our physical bodies. That means eating well. To be a good steward means exercising appropriately and getting enough sleep. To be a good steward means that we should avoid abusing drugs or alcohol, abstain from smoking and from overeating. When we seek to be good stewards of our physical bodies, then I believe we should rise above the misunderstanding of the COVID vaccine and get the vaccine because it's what good stewards of their bodies should do. I took my first vaccine shot last week when my turn came up, and I look forward to getting that second shot in a couple of more weeks. In the midst of this awful pandemic, I believe that we should take the vaccine in order to be good stewards of our bodies. We should not let misunderstanding create a conflict which prevents us from taking the vaccine and being good stewards of our bodies. Amen. And now I invite you to unite your hearts with mine as we come to a time of prayer. Let us be in, in prayer. O oh God of mercy and justice, our society lies bruised, broken, and badly bleeding. Our society is deeply divided by vicious racism of white supremacy which see, see some races as chosen over other races. Our society is plagued by groundless conspiracy theories which distract us from urgent problems such as human trafficking and pedophilia. Our society is threatened by a dangerous Christian nationalism which threatens our national vision for freedom of religion for everyone. 
When combined with white supremacy and conspiracy theories, this Christian nationalism threatens to take us down a road already traveled by Nazi Germany. O oh God, you showed us the way in which you intended for us to live through the ministry, teachings, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. A way of mercy, of justice, of compassion. Grant that as disciples of Christ, we may demonstrate the way you intended for us to live. Where there is racism, gossip, or xenophobia, help us to be your agents for equality, truth, and love. Where there is hunger or homelessness or poverty, help us to be your agents of mercy. Where there is hatred and conflict and violence, help us to be your agents of peace. Where there is loneliness or depression or guilt, help us to be your agents of hope. Where there is oppression or exploitation or injustice, help us to be your agents of justice. Where there is abuse of creation, help us to be your good stewards and agents of environmental healing. Most merciful God, we also lift up these personal concerns from our faith community. We pray for members of our faith community as well as for others who struggle with health concerns. We remember especially everyone fighting against the coronavirus or cancer or the flu or other serious illnesses. We also lift up those struggling with rehabilitation necessitated by surgery or injury or other causes. We also lift up those who are struggling with isolation or loneliness or depression during this difficult time. O oh God of healing, we pray that you will bestow the gift of healing in whatever form is most appropriate for all of those whom we have lifted up. All of this we pray in the name of Jesus the Messiah. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
this final benediction. Lord, instead of seeking the good in others, we tend to expect the worst. And in doing this, we miss out on so many opportunities and risk being misunderstood. As your disciples, we are called to love each other, fight for justice, and serve. But because of our shortcomings, prejudices, and selfishness, we fall short. Lord, open our hearts and our eyes to all of the good around us and to forgive when we're shown the worst. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm.